Our next guest, Rachel Ziemba of Rubini Global Economics, is here now with her perspective. And Rachel, Rachel, let's start with the important distinction here between the debts of Dubai World. They're not sovereign debts. No, they're not. And so the, the, the good news is, is that even if there is a default from Dubai World and the restructuring, that doesn't mean a sovereign default. But what I think the lesson we've learned is an implicit guarantee mm. isn't a guarantee. And so I think what we're starting to see, not only in Dubai, but around the world, is investors will start to look more closely at where the lines between of state support are less than clear. And that might mean some, credit, some credits could come under pressure. Now, someone made the comment that Dubai World is the Middle East's Lehman Brothers. Is that a fair comparison? <laughs> I think that might well have been, uh, we, we might be, have been one of the people saying that. I mean, I think in the sense of a very large institution that has uh, tentacles throughout the economy and loans um, in the, and uncertain counterparties, potential off-balance off sheet liabilities, it could be. And one of the reasons we're seeing Dubai authorities uh, backstopping the banks and trying to come up with a way to orderly restructure is that they don't want to have a systemic shock. I should structure should emphasize that even if it's the UAE's Lehman, which it may not be, it's not a global Lehman. Um, and the exposures that we're seeing for global banks are limited within their capital base. But it's a reminder that all is not quite well yet. Mm. And it's a, and we're being reminded of some of the risks that still exist, the imbalances that still exist in the global economy. The new normal in this world. Yes, well, Dubai faces the challenge of having to adjust to a low leverage economy. This was an economy that, scared, that benefited greatly during the boom years with real estate and finance, and so it's having to adjust. Now, sure. that's difficult. So let me ask you, are any of Dubai's sovereign wealth funds in trouble or any parts of them in trouble? Sure. Well, I would say the sovereign wealth funds of Dubai, which by which I'm including Istithmar, which is a subsidiary of Dubai World, and DIC, a subsidiary of Dubai Holding, uh, have been facing trouble for some time. Uh, they've been uh, facing some cash flow issues, uh, in part because their funding comes from Dubai property, mm -hmm. <laughs> not a good source of cash flow in recent months, um, but also because the projects they invested in tended to be highly levered. So we've seen DIC have to inject new capital in several of its investments. And so this is an example of the challenges they face. Now, again, with the Dubai World restructuring talks, we're hearing questions of will Istithmar, will DIC dump their, you know, sell their assets? Mm -hmm. I think it's something they'll try to avoid. Um, they'll try to avoid having to sell assets at a loss. But I think we will see them looking for exits, as they've already been doing with some property markets. Now, very quickly here, what other state-owned investment companies or sovereign wealth funds might be in trouble here if this is indeed the tip of the iceberg? Anything else in the Middle East? Latin America, Asia that we need to worry about? Well, I think we have to think of Dubai's sovereign wealth funds as a case of their own, in part because in many ways Dubai never quite made as much sense for having a sovereign wealth fund as others. Okay. Dubai has a structural deficit. The others tend to have surpluses, and many of them are receiving new capital. But I do think across the board we're seeing sovereign wealth funds see a need to have more liquidity, both because they may be called on for domestic support, but also so that they can be opportunistic and make investments where they see fit. Right. New scrutiny on these sovereign wealth funds, if nothing else. Exactly. And questions about where, uh, where the lines of political responsibility might be drawn. All right. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Rachel Ziambia of Rubini Global Economics right here in New York.